when I heard my good friend Randall Conell was organizing a workshop on mind uploading AGI brain computer interfacing uh, the singularity and all that good stuff uh, I really wanted to participate but being based in in Hong Kong it wasn't feasible for me to show up in person so I asked Randall to you know, send me a, a list of some of the key questions that he was interested in exploring at the event. And I'd, uh, I'd give a, a little bit of a video uh, improvisation on, on the theme of his questions. Now, the list of questions Randall sent would take approximately 10,000 years to really go through and answer in detail. So I, I'm, I'm going to give some of them overly short shrift but uh you know better better something than nothing so here here go here, here goes first question from randall could you tell us a little bit about how your thoughts on uh, ai safety have evolved over time and uh where you where you stand today well my my thoughts on ai safety at base are the same as they've always been. I mean, I, I think uh, there's a non-zero risk that as AI verges on AGI and artificial superintelligence, you know, things that are very bad by our current uh, human standards will happen. I don't intuitively, emotionally, I don't feel that risk is extremely high. On the other hand, rationally, I have to accept that we're in a situation of tremendous and uh, probably irreducible uncertainty. We're taking a leap into the unknown, and that's not unlike what humanity has been doing since uh, we, you know, stepped out of the African savanna and started developing civilization. We've been taking a huge leap into the into the unknown, one time after the other, you know, since civilization began and, and probably before that so i guess for me the question is really how much do i trust my sort of inner spiritual heart-based intuition that the singularity is almost surely going to come out okay and is in fact going to you know connect us with compassionate benevolent aspects of the universe that we're currently largely cut off from due to our, our limited mentalities. How much do I trust that intuition versus trust the more, you know, cold, objective, reason-driven part of my mind, which tells me we have no idea what the hell is, is, is going to happen. And the, this is really a dilemma that I'm, I'm ongoingly wrestling with. And it may be that process that dialectic is, is a valuable one because certainly I wouldn't want to go entirely in the direction of following only my heart and not reasoning, nor entirely in the direction of just reasoning and not, not going with, you know, intuition, which in, in many ways can have a, have a deeper insight than, than, than reason. I would say one when my thoughts on AI safety have evolved in the last few years, though, is I'm, I'm getting a more concrete sense of what there is to be worried about regarding the rollout of narrow AI throughout the world before we get to AGI. And I've been thinking more about what effect the species of narrow AI that gets developed can have on the type of AGI that comes about as narrow AI verges into AGI. So specifically, as I've been saying a lot recently, the, the core applications of narrow AI in the world right now are selling, spying, and killing. I mean, advertising, surveillance, and, 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 and military. And, you know, if, if it does happen that the first AGI is evolve out of the narrow AIs that are being built on the world today, what does that mean? Does it mean the first AGIs are going to be involved with selling, spying, and killing? I mean, not 
Not necessarily, but that's at least something we want to consider. There, there is a related issue which has to do with the control of narrow AI and then may have to do with the control of AGI that comes out of that narrow AI, which is, you know, how, how widespread democratic and participatory should the control of AI be versus how centralized and elitist should it be. And there's been a lot of thinking in the AI safety world for a long time that, you know, it would be safer if, you know, a small handpicked crew of wise and rational AI safety gurus were controlling the advent of, of AI as a verge from narrow AI toward AGI. There's another line of thinking which says that self-appointed elites who know what's best for everyone, uh, you know, often don't do as good a job as they thought they were going to do. And the failure modes of this are amply demonstrated throughout history. I mean, one of the elite good guys discovers a dark side within himself. The elite splinters into two groups. Someone gets stolen away by competition. I mean, humans who band together to know what's best for everyone and pull the puppet strings of the broader society. I mean, the, the track record isn't, isn't great, right? And of course, what's been posited by some folks in the AI safety world is like an expert committee of wise singularitarians who are building an AGI in their basement and sculpting its goal system to be beneficial and then releasing it in the world. What we're seeing now is more a move toward elitist control of AI by some advertising corporations, some large governments doing, uh, you know, surveillance and military stuff. So we're getting you know, a risk of this elitist control. However, the controllers are not who some of the elitist AI safety advocates might have wanted, right? And to my mind, well, of course, a part of me can't help but think, well, yeah, if I were just the one in control of me and 10 or 20 or 50 of my closest friends, you know, we're charting all this out. We want the best for humanity and for superhuman AGIs, right? And we've surveyed all relevant areas of, of history and of science and engineering and philosophy, and we can probably make a better choice than, you know, the whole of humanity, which includes a whole lot of people with a lot of ideas I think are, are totally whacked out. But then if I take a little bit deeper point of view. I mean, in, in in the end, I don't think any small group of people is going to do a better job than the global brain of, of all of humanity. I mean, and there are kinds of understanding and wisdom on the planet that I've never heard of and, and never imagined. And if, 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 if we want to really make the best possible AGI, which will grow into the best possible super intelligence, we need to craft ways I mean, the best odds of success seem to be if we can craft ways to really draw on the overall intelligence, intuition, and wisdom of the the global brain of humanity and our computing and communication networks, not some small elite group. As, as fun as it would be to be part of the small elite team creating the beneficial singularity. I mean, of course, this is what has led me in, in large part to the Singularity Net project that, that I'm now running that I founded in 2017. What we're, what we're trying to do with Singularity Net is to create a decentralized platform and, and community for both narrow AI and AGI so that all the AIs in the decentralized network of AIs and the AI programmers and the AI users can all, in a participatory and democratic way, control the evolution of that network. And if Singularity Net or something like it becomes a predominant way, or even a really significant way that AI is rolled out on the planet, then then that's going to counteract this elitist tendency that we're seeing with a few large corporations and then governments hiring most of the AI researchers, buying most of the AI 
startups and sort of driving the driving the AI agenda. Randall's next question, what would you consider a worst case scenario for AGI? What's a best case scenario? What's a likely outcome? Well, worst case scenario, we probably can't even imagine, but how about some some crazed Christian maniac mind uploads all of humanity into a simulation of the Christian hell and just burns our simulated clones uh, until the big crunch at the end of the universe? That would be pretty bad. I mean, we could come up with worse, but... Best is utopia, right? And of course, that could take a lot of forms. But what I've long said I'd like to do is fork myself into multiple versions, let one of them mind upload into the global super intelligent mind matrix or the multiversal super intelligent mind matrix, and then let let another one of them stay in roughly human form and upgrade itself uh, progressively so it can be an even better and greater human than it is possible in the in the scope of legacy humanity. Of course, when you really think about that, what's funny is, from the standpoint of the fork of me that remained human, I mean, when I split off a fork and let it merge with the super intelligent mind matrix, it would be like, okay, that fork of mine has been created. Oh, wait, now in the last one second, it's experienced 10 trillion times more things than I ever will be able to. And it's evolved into something totally uncomprehensible to me. So there, that's nice that I that I spawned that super intelligent mind child. Now I'll go on being being human, right? So it's a, there's going to be a discontinuity between forks of me that that embrace the singularity full on and became massively super intelligent versus forks of me that remained in the human form. But I, I mean, I would like to see everyone able to fork themselves however they want and make many copies of themselves that explore different regions of, of mind space. And this lets each mind explore a variety of different types of, you know, realities that are utopic in its, in its own perspective. And this is quite feasible. It may even be the most likely outcome, although we don't really have the basis to fully rationally estimate the probabilities. I think we can work toward increasing the probabilities of beneficial outcomes like this in a number of ways. I mean, one is the AIs that we're creating right now, which are going to grow into the AGIs of the maybe not too distant future, we should be using these AIs to do beneficial things like cure disease, you know, teach children, improve people's states of consciousness, discover science. We've got to take the bulk of AI R&D away from selling, spying, and killing. I mean, you're not going to eliminate those things, human society and human psychology being what they are, but they don't need to be the, the preponderance of what AI is, is used, used and developed for. And that, that's probably the most important thing we can do now to, you know, move the odds of utopic rather than dystopic or mediocre outcomes in a, in a positive direction. Next, Randall asked about Nick Bostrom's uh, book, Super Intelligence. I read a review of that called Super Intelligence, Fears, Promises, and Potentials a few years ago. I mean... My view of uh, Nick's book now is about the same as it was when I wrote that review. I mean, I love Nick Bostrom. We worked together in that World Transhumanist Association years ago. I mean, we organized a conference together. Brilliant thinker, uh, really fun, creative guy. I think uh, the book Super Intelligence is a brilliant example of argumentative rhetoric. It reads like it was written by the captain of the high school debate team or something. So, I mean, it makes a rigorous, careful argument that super intelligence doing things that humans would consider nasty, like annihilating all humans, is possible. And that these bad outcomes of super intelligence have odds greater than zero. But then the book often talks as if in its tone and in its informal statements, it talks as if it had been argued that 
bad outcomes from superintelligence are likely, but that was never demonstrated. All that was demonstrated is that the probability is, is somewhere above zero. So yet, of course, the probability is somewhere above zero that superintelligence will kill everyone, but Bostrom didn't demonstrate that it was probable, and no one has demonstrated that. On the other hand, I haven't demonstrated that it's highly unlikely that superintelligence will do bad things either. The, from a rational point of view, we just don't know. We're leaping into in leaping into the great unknown. But then Nick Bostrom, in that book at least, really champions a sort of elitist point of view. I mean, at some point in the book, he's sort of exploring the idea you could even have one genius AI researcher working on AGI protected by the auspices of the United Nations, and maybe that would be the safest way to do things. Well, I, I'm like exact opposite of that, right? I mean, I, I think we want a tremendous amount of brilliant AI and AGI researchers all around the globe with many different points of view collaborating, and I want a decentralized network coordinating this in a self-organized, democratic, and participatory way. Certainly not the UN, which, which can't even handle far, far simpler tasks than, 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 than coordinating the birth of, of general intelligence. Those are the first few questions from Randall. I think I will uh, put my response to his next questions in a separate video.